Hey, what's going on out there, YouTube family? This is an interview with David and Justin for their new film, The Gin. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this interview session, as well as definitely check out our reviews for The Gin and The Boy Behind the Door. The Gin does come out May the 14th everywhere. Uh, for rent, or VOD, as well as limited theaters. And around July, The Boy Behind the Door will be coming out around July the 29th, so definitely go and check that out as well. All right, here we go. Hey, what's up, yeah, guys? Finally. <laughs> <laughs> it's been forever. What's going on, We've guys? I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just going to get down to it. Uh, David, Justin, hey, you guys. Hello. I'm glad to be a part of this interview. Um, how are you guys doing today? We're doing well. How are you doing? And a little like cheesing a little bit. I'm gonna let it go. I'm just going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, first off, congratulations to you guys. First, from getting this film greenlit and it's coming out May the 14th, and then what I saw in Fantastic Fest 2020, The Boy Behind the Door is coming out in July. Congratulations, you guys. I'm happy for you guys, honestly. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Love your review, so, by the way. Whenever oh, you did? <laughs> whenever we're feeling down, we just play it. <laughs> <laughs> man, look, don't start, man. Give me a, give me a minute. Um, but yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get down to it. So with this film, which, by the way, we already shot our review for me and Lucas. Lucas left a small little question here. I'll bring it up a little bit later on. That'll be the last question of the day. Um, we did enjoy it. It's very different. Um, but for very good reasons. Um, but one of the big themes that we're kind of seeing is this unforgiving world um, of a, a circumstance of a kid um, going through a circumstance or, or, or some kind of situation where it's like unrelenting, like every bit of love or care or devotion is being tested and being ripped apart in, in this film, as well as The Boy Behind the Door. And I just wanted to Get you guys pick you guys brain on that because most horror films or films in general don't even go that bold um as to try to attempt to do something like that but we appreciate it as critics that you were willing to go down that route but i was curious y'all's prospect on that uh well we love kids in peril in horror movies um okay. it's a huge draw to us <laughs> uh in general we feel like it it really enhances the tension, you kind of get a stronger emotional core right off the bat without having to delve into too much exposition. You just kind of like have this yeah. natural like relatability where everybody is a kid at some point, everybody has that experience of having that sense of wonder or that sense of getting into trouble that they shouldn't. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's something that's, I don't know, on screen really like terrifying about like, you know, kids have, a little bit of this like sense of naivety and when you yeah. throw them into these situations where they're kind of forced to come of age really quickly it's just really it just kind of takes you on on a ride where you kind of even if sometimes you're treading on somewhat familiar territory you still don't know what to expect <laughs> and yeah. um so that's something we really like to to play with um not all of our stories are gonna do that we do have a few that are more centered on adults but we do um we do love children in peril and yeah it's obvious from our <laughs> from our first two films yeah i could definitely see that um so to capitalize on that and i, I don't know if i should say this because my review technically isn't out yet but dare i say you guys have kind of struck gold twice um and I mean, this film, Jen, like it, the cinematography is amazing. Um, the score by Matthew James is actually like when it first started, I was like, this is this 80s feel that I'm like in love with. And then you have Ezra, who's just an amazing performer in general. And I, I mean, the whole entire crew, it feels like you guys are just so dedicated. But I was curious, do you guys feel like it's just kind of a luck situation or is it that you guys are just so focused and everybody's just bringing it, no matter, you know, the budget or whatever, like you guys are just bringing it. I was curious because I'm like, honestly, to me, you guys have struck gold twice. I'll say that on record right now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for all the kind words. Um, I feel like, I feel it's really odd and kind of scary for us because Justin and I really consider ourselves unlucky. Um, <laughs> 
a really, <laughs> really, really long time just to even get one movie made. And yeah, every turn has just led to rejection and mm -hmm. things falling through. Um, so when we made the gin, because we actually shot it first, it was because Boy Behind the Door got pushed. And we had just, we just, we were so over one more thing falling through. And we just knew that there was a big likelihood that it wasn't even going to happen. That we were like, well, let's make, let's just try to make something ourselves. Let's really try to take our fate into our own hands. Um, and that was really the inception or the reason why we even did the gin. You know, we didn't have any big resources or really any money to do it. But in terms of the movies being well received so far, and knock on wood, it is stays that way. I mean, I think that just is a testament to, you know, all the talented people we've been able to work with and yeah. everyone has, you know, really given it their all. You know, we have great acting in, in both movies, Lonnie and Ezra and, yeah. and the rest of the cast and great music in both of them. Julian has great cinematography in both. So it's, you know, if you surround yourself with talented people, it, it really makes you look better. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see it. Um, so this movie, you know, this is more on the supernatural side, whereas the boy behind the door, it terrified me for a different reason. Cause I was like, these are kids, like why do kids got to go through this? But with this one, yes, a kid is going through, but it's more on the supernatural side. And it's kind of like, I was scared for a different reason on this one. It's more so like, oh my gosh, I can't, you know, I don't know what's about to happen. And there were moments I was like, am I looking at Mandy right now? Is this, wait, wait, wait is this Amityville horror? Like what's going to happen? So what were the challenges uh, when it came to this film versus the boy behind the door that you guys found, whether it you know, was a, like the budget or whether it was just the complications of doing this all in one small uh, apartment, which I commend you guys for that, which is amazing. But I was just curious, what were your challenges with this one as opposed to the boy behind the door? Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think that the, the biggest challenges in this one uh, we're definitely budget and, sure. um, and, you know, it was interesting, like, so being in that small apartment, yes, that came with its own like logistical issues. A lot of them were just like, where do you hide all the equipment? Where do you hide the, the crew? Um, you know, we have, we have an affinity for long flowing takes <laughs> and yeah. that we make. Oh, um, and this has like shots that go through the entire apartment in one take. And it was just like, figuring out where to stage everything um, that things like that were a little bit tricky where we, what we did enjoy with this one, as opposed to boy behind the doors, we had a lot more like control. I think, um, you know, mm -hmm. there, uh, there are a lot more like, there's more like red tape because we had another production company on boy behind the door where it's like, it's just, you know, there are more politics to deal with. I think that just makes things a little bit trickier and we were able to navigate it. Um, but it was just two very different experiences. And this one, they both came with their own like unique issues. But um, I think that this just having the limited budget while trying to do something supernatural makes you, forces you to be more creative. <laughs> so yeah. that, that was the most difficult thing. Okay. So I'm gonna round this out really quick with a dual question. You both can answer it, you know, individually or collectively. Um, when I think about the boy behind the boy behind the door, as well as Jen, um, you guys, it feels like from an emotional aesthetic that it's pulled from a very raw place, um, whether it's like the connection with the dad and the son in the Jen, or if the two friends, the two best friends, it feels like it comes from a personal place from you guys. Like it's literally pulled from you guys' heart. I, I can't confirm that or deny that. Uh, but it feels like that. And I was curious you guys' perspective on it. And then the second question is, if you guys had one IP, no matter what it is, no matter, you know, whatever franchise, past or present, book or previous movie that you like to pull from, Lucas left that question because he is a big Stephen King fan and he wants you guys to direct something by Stephen King, regardless of whatever it is. So I was curious, those two questions, that's, that's all I have left. We are huge Stephen King fans. <laughs> um... <laughs> Well, again, thank you for all the questions. <laughs> We're overwhelmed with them. Um, I think thematically, like, you know, Boy Behind the Door, you know, Justin and I have been lifelong friends, so we really could pull a lot of inspiration with that, you know, the theme of friendship 
and also hope you know we have yeah. we haven't luckily been abducted or in that situation but you know, both of those are very two relatable themes and with the gin i think the biggest theme for us to explore was really that of grief and you know what it feels like to lose someone what it feels like to maybe perceive yourself as not adequate but then also tying that in with you know blame or guilt um and yeah grief is definitely a really hard hitting theme for both of us for for different reasons but it's something everyone has to you know unfortunately experience at some point um on a brighter note ips <laughs> i know we, the ip the you know the ip i know the Stephen king ip you're about to say and we tried to get it but we're not able to get it. But we've been begging at doorsteps and people to get it. I'm gonna say put it on the record. <laughs> oh, you, want, you actually want to put it on the record so we can. I do. It. So maybe they'll see it and they'll be like, <laughs> "Give it to us." We want to. We want to do Cujo. Oh snap! Oh, we love Cujo. We we oh, tried. We tried. We begged. I mean, we still have two souls, so maybe we can, you know, open up the book, the uh -huh. book, and make a wish. See if we can get it. <laughs> Bruh, I hope you guys get it. Um, man, I could talk all day with you guys. I know you guys got to go. I really appreciate your time. I feel honored, you know, to be able to interview you guys and all the success with Jen coming out May the 14th. I think it's coming out everywhere pretty much digitally for rent and then also in limited theaters, which is awesome. Um, and I can't wait for the world to see the boy behind the door. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Me and Lucas have been like huge advocates for it. We even paid for a couple of our friends to see the screening for it. So yeah, hopefully we'll be back for an interview with that later on at another time, but we'd love that. <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>